basically what Jethro told Moses what to do. Thank you, Shane. You know, uh, as Shane was talking about the, uh, the, 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 school, the education situation in this country, I thought I'd uh, give you a little history of, of why it's such a, a tightly controlled entity. And uh, there's a few things that are happening that are they're trying to break that control. But uh, do you realize if you've read The Naked Communist, in there, uh, Cleon uh, itemizes from communist literature 45 communist goals. Anybody ever read those? 45 communist goals? I mean, this is back in the 40s when their literature was available and uh, under J. Edgar Hoover, uh, Cleon was one of the experts on communism. He had him speak on communism when Hoover couldn't. So uh, he became quite, a, quite an expert and that was kind of the root of the naked communist if some of you read that book. But one of them was, one of the 45 communist goals, and it will surprise you if you read them, <laughs> how many have been accomplished. As a matter of fact, 44 have been accomplished. There's only one more left number 45 and uh, that's to repeal the Connolly reservation but that's a uh, uh, in the UN treaty anyway that's another subject but uh, one of those items is to get control of the education system in this country and the way that they propose to get control is to get control of the teacher colleges so if you train teachers through teacher colleges the way you want, that of course is going to influence what students are taught in the classroom. And the first teacher college that they gained control of was the teacher college at Columbia University in New York. And, uh, and there's a whole story behind that and how they did it. But so you get control of the teacher colleges and one by one that's what they did. Very influential people with lots of money and lots of endowment money get control of these teacher colleges. And then what you do is make sure that your teachers who are hired in the districts have to go through teacher colleges. Well, how do you do that? Well, you require them to be certified by the state. And for the most part, certification requires that you graduate from colleges of education in various, in various universities. And that's how you get your certification to teach. And, uh, and that's a requirement of most district schools. It's beginning a little bit to fracture. But initially, you have to have a certification to teach in order to teach in a district school. And, uh, and then accreditation is another thing because you have to be certified in order, this, this was up until about 10 years ago when some of us really threw a fit and got it changed. You have to be a certified teacher or your school has to have, I uh, forget the percentage, like 90% certified teachers in order to be accredited. Do you see the tight straitjacket control? And, and this says nothing about Common Core or any other stuff that's coming down. I mean, this is what's happened to gain control of our education system. Well, back in the, the early 90s, in uh, I think it was 93, uh, some of our good friends in the legislature, like Jeff Grosskost and a few of them, if you remember Jeff, uh, he said, you know, uh, we need to see if we can uh, form an education system that will compete on free market principles with the established educational bureaucracy and see if, if, uh, if, if that can actually uh, do better in educating our young people. And so that's when charter legislation was passed. And I grew up in the business world. I never in the world thought I'd be involved in, pu in public education. But uh, some of my friends, including Jeff Grosskost, said, Earl, you need to look at this because we had tried to get the teaching of the Constitution in the Mesa Public Schools. We were stopped colder than mackerel. I mean, now we have our, we have our curriculum. We already know this stuff. 
we know what to teach, you know, it's stuff you learn in the teacher colleges and, and uh, not so, it was very frustrating. And uh, when, uh, when they passed charter legislation, I looked at it and the Goldwater Institute put on a big seminar trying to get somebody to look at this uh, legislation that the, that the legislature passed and how free it was. So I went to this conference and uh, I couldn't hardly believe what I was hearing. Uh, they had stripped away a lot of the rules and regulations uh, that teachers have to go through and that schools have to do. And uh, when I saw, I can't remember her name, it was Dr. Somebody who was an assist assistant superintendent of public instruction in Arizona, stand up and say at this conference, somebody needs to try this. And I thought, whoa. So anyway, we wrote a charter and we didn't know what we were doing, but neither did anybody else. And, and uh, anyways, here 20 years later, we're going. I, I thought I would, uh, and by the way, uh, there's a lot of great teachers out there who are certified teachers, don't get me wrong. And about, uh, I don't know how many, half of our teachers are certified, I can't remember, but uh, just to give you an example, uh, we needed a, another math teacher for high school math a number of years ago. And I had a good friend that goes to church with me, Bob Duffin. He's an engineer at Motorola. And I knew he was getting kind of tired of that and after 20, 25 years. I don't know how long he was there. And I said, well, Bob, how's your math? And he says, well, it's pretty good, engineer and so forth. And, and I said, have you ever thought about teaching high school math? And he said, well, I'm not certified. I said, Bob, teachers that, that are hired at charter schools don't have to be certified. He said, really? He came on board, retired from, uh, from uh, Motorola, came on board. He was one of the best math teachers we had. And uh, why? Because he's from the real world. And when some kid says, when am I ever going to use that, you know, in math as they do, he could tell them. I mean, it was marvelous. So charter schools have, have introduced a whole new element to, to co competition. And I thought, uh, <clears throat> I thought I'd like, I thought I'd read to you what Arizona law says about uh, teaching in the schools and what should be taught. This might surprise you. Uh, first of all, the preamble to the Arizona Constitution. Have you read that lately? Here's what it says. We the people of the state of Arizona, grateful to Almighty God for our liberties, do ordain this Constitution, okay? It's kind of a nice way to start out a, a set of laws, isn't it? Here's another one. Article 2, Section 1 says, A frequent recurrence to fundamental principles is essential to the security of individual rights and the perpetuity of free government. A frequent recurrence to fundamental principles. That's in the Constitution of Arizona. Now, the Arizona Revised Statutes, which, of course, you know is uh, laws passed by the legislature. Listen to this. This is ARS 15-710. All schools shall give instruction in the essentials, sources, and history of the Constitution of the United States. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Here's another one. A teacher or administrator in any school in this state may read or post in any school building copies or excerpts of the following materials. And then it lists nine different items. Number one, the national motto, which as you know is what? In God we trust. In God we trust. See, any teacher can post that or read that. The national anthem, and you heard Michelle, who by the way is, a, what should we say, alumni faculty of heritage. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> uh, the national anthem, once you get past the first verse, you get to that second verse. Whoa, I mean, it talks about God all the way through that. Did you, did you hear that? The Pledge of Allegiance, the Preamble of the Constitution of this state, which I read to you, the Declaration of Independence, Mayflower Compact, 
listen to this, writing speeches, documents, and proclamations of the founding fathers and presidents of the United States. Any school teacher can do that. Now when they introduced that legislation, it said, even if it mentioned God, in the process of legislation, they, they took that part out, but still means the same thing, even still. I could paper the walls of that school with messages from the Founding Fathers and Presidents of the United States giving credit to God for our liberties. Now look at this, uh, then I'll be quiet here. In ARS 15-508, it says this. Now remember, the, 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 the one that required the teaching of sources of the Constitution is ARS 15-710, remember that. In ARS 15-508, it says, Willful neglect or failure on the part of a school superintendent, principal, teacher, or other officer of a school to observe and carry out the requirements of Section 15-710 is sufficient cause for dismissal or removal of such person from his position. Has that been changed in the law? No. That's still the law. Way down, buried deep though, Henry. I mean, way down there, because it's, it's kind of old law, you know what I mean? Isn't that amazing? Earl, which one was that one again? That was ARS. 15-508. Yeah, you can get that online. I mean, this is, this is serious, because the legislature who passed this says we want to make sure sources and history of the Constitution are taught in school.